train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. There are few words in existence with as many ugly connotations as prejudice. Throughout history, this negative noun has reared its ugly head and has caused more than its fair share of problems. And I'm sorry to say that it does occur among non-faceless vehicles too. Mostly, the prejudice comes from newer generations who think themselves superior to their predecessors. And sometimes, it originates from vehicles who think their standing is higher simply because they carry out more prestigious jobs. Well, it's not every day that our passengers arrive with an entourage, or that they are personally greeted by Mr. Starr. Probably because it's not every day you receive a visit from Lord and Lady Whiteadder. As in... Lord Richard Whiteadder? The pilot? The very same. One of only a handful of airmen to survive a dogfight with the infamous Red Baron. Red Baron? Should I be on my way then? <laughs> I think you will be fine, James. I hope so. I'd love to hear about that encounter. And what I would love is for a shunter to remove my coaches already. Where is Thomas? Probably heading up to Farqua on his usual midday passenger service. Then what about that other shunter? The green fellow? What's his name? Patrick? Paul? Percy. Is that it? Very well. Where is he? Over at Calden, helping Edward shunt some trucks. You mean to say... You don't have a dedicated station pilot? If neither Thomas or Percy are busy, then they do serve as station pilot. Otherwise, we just shunt our own coaches. Shunt your own coaches? What a disgrace! What's wrong with pulling your own weight? Cool. Of course you would be fine with such a primitive arrangement, being mixed traffic and all. What's that supposed to mean? It means... You don't know the first thing about maintaining a reputation. Handling trucks does not become a proper engine. Then I guess Gordon is no longer a proper engine, since he's handled plenty of trucks since your last visit. Don't you dare spread lies about my brother like that. Then ask him the next time you see him. I will just as I will ask the next engine I see to remove my coaches. I say, you there, Toby. Be a good chap and take away my coaches, please. Excuse me, Alfred. Is your hearing going, old-timer? I asked you to take my coaches. You think there's something wrong with my hearing? Well, there's clearly something wrong with your eyes since you obviously don't see the train I'm pulling. It's only filthy trucks. They can wait a moment. Not these ones. Not if you expect to return to London tomorrow. Pity it can't be today. Caw. This island is a disgrace to the LNER. How on earth does Gordon manage? Because he doesn't have to deal with mongrels like you. Arrgh. Toby said what? He called me a mongrel. And all I did was ask they take away my coaches. 
Sounds like a perfectly reasonable request. But I do partially understand his reaction. Please don't tell me you have to fetch your own express. No, I don't. Percy or Thomas usually organize it for me. That's a relief. It might also interest you to know that James had the audacity to say you've been pulling trade loads of trucks since I was last here. I have, Alfred. Oh, Gordon. What would Sir Nigel say upon hearing his prized prototype has been reduced to hauling goods trains? I think he would be pleased to know that his creation is being used to his full potential. I'm surprised you're so accepting of that, Gordon. There was a time when you would have balked at such work. Well, I could only argue with Mr. Star for so long. And besides, if my efforts can help our company prosper, then I think every engine in the LNER has an obligation to broaden their skill set. Even if it does land you on the wrong side of the law on occasion. What do you mean by that? Oh, I recently took a goods train that was carrying more than just freight, thanks to the misguided actions of my guard. Really? What happened? I'd rather not talk about it, Alfred. I hope you understand. Of course, Gordon. I must say, your point about broadening our skills is very intriguing. You should return to London to teach the rest of us. Your expertise would be invaluable. Hmm. It would be nice to see our nation's great capital again. But I think I'm better suited here. However, there's no reason why you couldn't set an example for our compatriots when you return. No, I suppose there isn't. Oi! Get out of my station! Good lord! What's going on? Oh no. They must be back. Who? The scum of the earth. If I've told you mugs once, I've told you a thousand times. Don't peddle your rubbish here. It's a free country, isn't it? And you tosspots want to change that. We want Britain to be great again. To not be bogged down under. I don't want to hear it. Your group is on thin ice as it is. One call from me to the coppers and you're done. Now, get out. You come round again, I'll chuck you on the blooming tracks. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britons never, 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 never shall be slaves. Good grief, Gordon. Who were those ruffians? Members of the British Union. Oh no. You have them here too? Unfortunately, the opportunistic vermin moved in last year when the island was in the midst of a bevy of strikes. They're a pest to be sure. I can remember back when they were called the BUF. They had quite the following in London's East End. How? I'll never know. <sighs> I revere democracy as much as anyone else, but sometimes its overly tolerant nature is too easily exploited. Germany's current government is living proof of that. Yes, indeed. But if I had to pick between the ideologies of Germany, Russia, or Britain, I'll remain with good old Blighty every day. Britons, never, never, never shall be slaves. Hear, hear. The political party that was the British Union might not sound like much, but I suspect you'll change your mind when I tell you that when the group was first founded in 1934, it went by a different name. The British Union of Fascists. And it was very much a far-right-wing organization. One that would garner much support throughout its existence. 
At its peak, the party boasted around 50,000 members. Though that number had dropped to around 20,000 by 1939, it was still a force to be reckoned with. One that wormed its way onto Sodor. If you recall from my story about the strikes, you might also remember Scarloe telling Thomas about rumblings among the workers at the Boxford Ballast Mine and the docksides of Ben Glass. As it turns out, this disquiet had nothing to do with labour relations. Men of the British Union, sometimes called black shirts because of the uniforms they used to wear, had started spreading their nonsense about the Scarlowe Railway, taking advantage of the intense unrest of the island's workforce. While most would ignore their anti-Semitic, isolationist rantings, I'm sorry to say that some would listen, and that it was only a matter of time before things took a serious turn. What did you just call me? I'm so sorry, David. It just slipped out. Rubbish. I know you've been hanging around with those black shirt prats. Have you been spying on me? Some of the lads told me about it. I was prepared to tolerate it, so long as it didn't interfere with your work. Clearly, that was a mistake. So, what happens now? I'll tell you what happens. You leave the yard in the next five minutes and don't come back. You're... you're sacking me? But I have a family! You should have thought of that before you start listening to the wrong people. Shove off, Michael. You'll regret this, I promise you that. <sighs> what a shame. Yes, it is. You did the right thing, David. I know. Still. I hope you don't mind my asking, but what was that word he called you? It's a derogatory term for Jewish people. And being Jewish is a problem for some? For those tossers in the British Union, yes. <sighs> I should have knocked that twit's block off for saying that. I would be careful if I were you, David. Those British Union chaps are likely to stick up for one of their own. Well, if I get done in during the night, the coppers will know who to question first. Don't talk like that. I'll be fine, Scarlowy. Don't worry. Excuse me, Gov. You got the time? Sure. It's around... How'd you sleep, Scarlowy? Not well, Ivo. I couldn't help but worry about David. Me too. But I think he'll be alright. Oi! Lads! What's this I hear about one of your station masters getting into a scrap last night? Excuse me, Diesel? Oh. You didn't know. No what? I just said. One of your station masters got into a fight. Did they say who? Or where? Um, David somebody? Up at Sudwin. I knew it! I warned him about those confounded black shirts. Black shirts? Is the British Union still skulking about your railway? Why are they picking on you? I don't know. Frankly, I don't care why. If they start attacking our friends, they'll be in for a world of hurt. Let's just hope David's in a position to see that. Indeed. So the Pratt threw a punch that I saw coming from a mile away. I stepped sharply to the side and got a clear shot at his left temple. One sharp jab, and down he went like a ton of bricks. Then his mate comes at me. 
so I drop him with a haymaker. The last one came charging at me like a bull, so I used his momentum to throw him straight into the silly twit who asked me what the time was. You're not telling porkies, are you, Dave? I know you used to box, but still. No porkies, Gus. Hand to God, it's the truth. And I'm very happy that is the case. Ah, good morning, Scarlowy. How are you? Better knowing that you're all right. We heard about your little scuffle at Cruven's Gate. Taking on four men all by yourself? That's amazing! They were idiots, the lot of them. I mean, why would you try and mug a bloke around the corner from a police station? But I don't think I should be so smug. Not when I'll have to front court next week. What? Why? Because those same idiots are claiming I attacked them. One middle-aged bloke taking on four others? I can't believe any court would entertain such a ridiculous notion. Well, at least one does. I've hired a lawyer and I'm going to fight this. All I need to do is proof the British Union was behind this, and I'm off the hook. Unfortunately, that was easier said than done. The British Union did a sterling job of distancing itself from the case. And to be fair, it is quite possible they had nothing to do with this assault, since the muggers never implicated the group. Nor did they say that the workman who was fired the day before put them on to Sudwin Station Master. Whatever the truth of the matter, I doubt very much it would have changed what happened next. David Becker successfully defended himself and each of his attackers got eight years inside. Though it was never proven the British Union was involved, that didn't stop the papers from heavily implying that they were. Now it was their turn to be on the receiving end of a wave of prejudice. One so vehement, they would leave Sodor. As much as I don't like media bias, I can't deny that, in this case, it did do some good. I'm also pleased to say that the British Union itself would be dissolved a year later. And I'm sure you can guess as to why that happened.